Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elston and welcome to my channel, Elston Nation. In this video, we're going to talk about what I painted in April. So to get you all up to speed if you haven't been following along with the series, I've made a decision not to buy any minis in 2021. Now I know there's some loopholes in that, but that's a story for another day. This was mainly for two reasons. One, I have a mountain of shame or opportunity, depending on your point of view, that would make a lot of people cry. Still, four months in, people are still shocked that I'm pulling armies out of a region which is more frequently used when people read books. And two, I wanted to save money. To say my hoarding habit had gotten out of hand was a little bit of an understatement and I was genuinely intrigued to find out how much I actually spent on minis each month. Now I couldn't put an exact number of what I spent each month because it depended on a number of things. One, what was getting released that month. Two, what ideas or inspiration my brain had come up with. Or three, what the community was doing so I could follow along. I'm sure some of you can at least relate to one of these. So how to quantify what changed each month. I decided to measure something else that also benefited me at the same time. The retail value of the minis I painted. So this isn't an exact science by any stretch of the imagination but one that I thought would be fun and also help me tackle that part of the shame while saving money. So as each month has gone on, I've tailed up the amount of minis I've painted and recorded it all so you can follow along with my progress. Progress. I flip-flop between that. Progress, 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 progress. It seems Australians say progress. A lot of Brits say progress. I don't know. I literally, it's a 50-50 coin toss which one I'm going to say. Also, I didn't add last month's total to the current total, so here's a little progress update for you. The current total is £5,249.98. Now that you're caught up, let's get on with this month's progress. Progress, progress. So we're going to start off with another mini from Atlantis Miniatures. Now you may have seen last month I did a troll from Atlantis Miniatures as a commission, and this is again a, another commission from the same client, also from Atlantis Miniatures. This is a manticore, and here is the artwork the client wanted to use as reference for this model. This mini took me a while to get going with it. Now I think this was down to me having trouble translating the artwork onto the mini, but I eventually got going with it. Sometimes a mental block happens as you try to figure out everything to do with the model before you actually get started. And I think this is a bit more prevalent in a mini painting than a lot of people would like to admit. The only way around this is to actually get moving. You may not know all the answers, but that's fine. Nine times out of 10, you'll figure out on a journey and that's exactly the case with this mini. The base was also something that really got me scratching my head as well, as the shape was just throwing me off for some reason. So I added some contrast paints and luckily Geek Gaming Scenix to the rescue with some dark meadow put down. This really started to fill in the shapes and it started giving me an understanding of what this was gonna look like. My frustrations were quickly evaporating so I made some DIY moss out of some foam flock. Then added some flowers and bingo, done. So this model which was really getting me scratching my head actually turned out to not be too bad and it just goes to show, just get some paint on the model, you'll figure it out on the way. Now the RRP for this model is £65 so we're adding that to the total. Wherever the total shows up. Also finished Big Morty. This model was a lot of fun to paint. It took me longer than I thought, but at the same time it was really quite enjoyable. And I think taking a little bit longer on this really helped improve the paint job. I wasn't rushing anything, I wasn't speed painting, so this became a, an effort into trying to make something really quite nice. Hopefully the client is pleased with it. It's gone off today, so we should be with the client very, very soon. I had a lot of fun with the base as well. The Snotlings have got so much character. You can play around with them so much. My favorite is the little guy with the tank. I used a lighter and I stretched out some flying rod to make a little dribble effectively down to the puddle and then use some water texture to create it looking like water coming out of the pipe. Then added a load of contrast paints to it and it just one of the coolest little things. I don't I'm even sure if it's supposed to go there. I've got a funny feeling it has its own slot, but man, that was a cool little spot. Now I filmed all of the painting of this and I'm still undecided if I'm gonna bother doing a tutorial for it. There's a lot of editing that'll need to go into it, but if the demand's there, I'll put it out. However, there's a lot of Mortarian videos on the internet right now, so mine might just be adding to the ongoing pile of other Mortarian videos. 
If you would like to see it, please put it in the comments below. Also, don't wait till the end of the video to put the comment because by the time you get to the end of the video, you will have forgotten about that. So if you want to do it, do it now. Might as well also say like and subscribe and all that jazz because why not? If you like the content, that is. If you don't, you can just move on. That's fine. Either way, I'm happy that you're watching. So Mortarion comes in at £90 and we're going to add that to the total. I also finished Mother of Dragons from A Song of Ice and Fire. I honestly don't have a lot to do with these guys from last month. You may have seen the progress pictures. Progress, progress. However, I didn't have a lot to do. So it's just a couple of little touch-ups doing the base. And yeah, these guys were done. So these guys come in at £34.99 as an RRP. I'm not entirely sure if that's right because it seems to change no matter where I go. So we're going to add £34.99 to the total as well. Now for the bit you've all been waiting for. The Death Corpse of Creed. Now for the real challenge this month. I decided, well, the community actually decided, that I was going to paint my Death Corpse of Creed army. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to get anywhere close to finishing this. However, I thought I would take on the challenge regardless. The Death Corps of Krieg are a faction of the Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum, depending on your date of birth, basically, of the Imperium Man in the Warhammer 40k universe. Long story short, the Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum, is the Imperium's regular army. I use regular in the lightest terms here. The regiments of the Death Corps of Krieg originated surprisingly from the planet Krieg? 1500 years in the past, that's 40k past, just for clarification. There was a rebellion on Krieg, which saw the world scorched to a blackened rock through atomic fire. For 500 years, the planet's surface was a war zone of atomic fire and grueling trench warfare. The survivors of this took to underground cities as it was no longer possible to walk on the surface without protective equipment. After the rebellion was quashed, the Imperial Guard on the planet devoted themselves to atoning for their past sins by supplying the Imperium with the only resource Krieg had left to offer, manpower. The soldiers of Krieger have a different mentality to your standard guardsmen, and are borderline fanatics. They believe in self-sacrifice for the God Emperor's Imperium, and would literally clog the guns of their enemies with their bodies if required. Since the soldiers of Krieg live on what is now effectively a death world, and have plenty of experience in trench warfare, this made them perfect candidates for the Imperial Guard. When recruits are inducted into the Death Corps of Krieg, their name is removed and they are given a number, and this will stay with them until death comes for them. Since Krieger is an irradiated planet now, the gas masks that are assigned are somewhat of a second skin and the guardsmen will operate in them almost constantly. This also makes my life easier because I don't have to paint eyes! There's plenty enough lore out there on the internet to tell you about Krieg, however, it's just a brief little induction to what Krieg are like. They love artillery, they love their guns, they love self-sacrifice, they are guardsmen fanatics. Now it might be worthwhile me mentioning why Krieg. Krieg are one of the most expensive armies you can get for Warhammer 40k. The Imperial Guard requires you to have lots of tanks and lots of foot troops. Now, you can only get Krieg from Forge World. So all of the soldiers are Forge World models and anyone that knows anything about Forge World will know this is pricey. So why Krieg? Surely this is just a recipe for losing money. The answer is kind of yeah. Yeah, it is. However, I am a sucker for a good deal. Now, I knew a friend who had a friend who was selling this Krieg army. He showed me pictures of it. And my brain did a quick bit of mathematic acrobatics and went, oh, that's a really good deal. And so I bought it. The army was in a relatively good state. However, hit and miss to say the least on some of these things. They've been partially painted already. Some of the infantry have been partially based already. With that in mind, I understood that I would have a few challenges ahead of me on making these all look uniform since they already had some weathering and paint on them. Some of them were damaged. Some of them were just crazy conversions and just generally weird. When I saw that Krieg was going to be the winner of the voting, I went to work on cleaning them up. I took apart the ones with salvageable and I analyzed what I wanted to keep and what I didn't want to keep and what 
I could use elsewhere. So there's effectively three Earthshaker cannons which have gotten removed from whatever vehicle they were attached to. There's an APC, which uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with, but it looks like it could be fun. There's a Chimera lying around. There's this weird Chimera with tracks. They all got effectively canned. They're all now in a box for spare parts where I will do something with them at some point. So I only wanted to keep what was salvageable and what was useful and what could actually be painted to make a army. I got the army in, I got the deal, it was working out well. And hobby hoarding kicked in again and I wanted more. I wanted to annihilate my enemies with many, many guns. That's the way the Imperial Guard do it, right? I had also played a friend who'd played Imperial Guard as well against them. And I got my ass handed to me many, many times. So I thought, if I get that army, I can do the same. How many of you out there have done that exact same thing? For some reason, however, when April hit, I didn't get started on them right away. Now, whether it was down to a mental or creative block, or whether I was just generally procrastinating, I don't know, but oh boy, did I pay for that. It wasn't until the 10th of the month where paint actually started going down on the models, and I thought I was making pretty good progress within... Th progress, progress. Within three days, they were primed, base colors were down, highlights were down on all the vehicles. We were looking good. I decided not to strip the models down to bare plastic again because uh, it's going to add more time to it. And these are tanks. They're going to have mud, they're going to have crap all over them. So a little bit of paint that's a bit too thick can be hid pretty easily with some dirt. I was basically going for speed more than anything else. I then tried something which was pretty new for me. Oil washes! I did a 50-50 mix of burnt umber and black using Odler's thinner to make a wash. To be honest, I probably should have practiced a little bit more with this, or at least experimented before I decided I was going to do this on the entire army without ever fully testing this out. However, it turned out to be a real lifesaver. I know a lot of people shy away from oil paints, but to be honest with you, there's really nothing to worry about. It's just two things you need to remember. One, wash your brushes with odorless thinner. Two, no licking brushes. No licking brushes. Don't do it. This stuff is toxic. It's bad for you. And you will really quickly know about it. So I've warned you, if you lick your brush with oil paints, it's on you, not me. All right, don't do it. It's dumb. Yeah, you really don't want this stuff inside you. It's incredible what this can do. And it's opened my eyes to oil paints. I knew of them. I'd never been that practiced with them. I did them back at college and they were really interesting to do actually like when you're using thick oil paints um to try and do portraits and stuff generally really interesting i'd never used them in this context before and it just goes to show that paint can be used in multiple different ways so the oil wash went down and it made them look like horrible messes but as it was still wet brushed on some odorless thinner over the top all the dirt started washing away just like dirt would wash off a tank it was incredible. It's really simple though. Mix up your wash, plaster it all over the model, then wash it off. You may need to use a cotton bud or a makeup brush to clean things up a little more, but I found having a little pot of odorless thinner to hand to rinse the brush off will always allow you to clean things up quite nicely. This saved me a lot of hassle. I wouldn't have been able to get as much done as I did without this. So yeah, speed, oil washes are your friends. After a varnish and cleaning things up, they were all ready. Also, with some help from Geek Gaming Scenics, again, the infantry were based up pretty rapidly, and yeah, this is what I got done for the Death Corps of Krieg in what is effectively 20 days. So I'm not going to read out all the prices for all these all separately because there's quite a bit and we'll be here all day. However, I'll put a price list below, so if you do want to see what they currently cost, and this is current prices with Forge World, then yeah. That, that's what it currently is. So, if you're watching this in the future, and things have gone up, this is what they were in the past. However, let's see what we can do. A Command HQ Squad, Imperial Bombard, a Thunder Siege Tank, two Hades Breaching Drill, a Normal Command Squad, three Heavy Mortars, three Auto Cannon Teams, two Mortar Teams, five Heavy Bolter Teams, three Last Cannon Teams, three Tank Commander Sets, five Death Riders, two Death Rider Commanders, five Grenadiers, Stubber and Melter Guys, 
A squad of E's, three quad launchers, i.e. thug guns, an artillery crew, a Praetor armored assault launch, a Storm Lord, three Carnadon battle tanks, eight Lehman Rust tanks, three Basilisks, three Hydras, twelve Sentinels, three Chimeras, two Manticores, two Bane Blades, and a Death Strike missile launcher. Also, uh, Sentinel Tractor, but that's not sold on Forge World anymore, so I have no idea how much they're valued at anymore. I think it's something like 50 quid, but I don't know, which is annoying. Because it's awesome, it's a tiny little go-kart thing. Altogether, this total comes to £2,700.99. If we add that to the current total, we come out at £7,950.97. Which is silly. It is just, just silly. If I carry on at this rate, I may well hit 24000 by the end of the year, but we'll see how that goes if I can keep up that pace that is. Not saying that I will, but it's a possibility. Just saying. To be mental, absolutely mental. <sighs> now this, this is just kind of crazy how this is working out and I don't know where this is gonna take me. If I can keep this up the entire year, I think I'm gonna die. However, a dent in my pile of shame is gonna be pretty much guaranteed how much of a dent, I don't know. I'm currently on my fifth army now? Fifth army in my fourth month. That's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, st I'm in shock with it myself, to be honest with you. Um, I've still got a lot of things planned, but for this month, which is May, I'm gonna chill out a little bit again. I'm gonna relax, I'm just gonna paint the stuff I wanna do. Got some cool things lined up. There will be a big video about painting this army. I've recorded a lot of the steps and I want to go through step by step what actually happens when you do something like this. It's not as pretty as people may think. The result looks so impressive, but I want to show people the reality behind it because uh, just uh, I want to kind of debunk the myth. I want to, I want to show people what actually goes on and um, what kind of issues you might run into, what kind of feelings and how it plays with your mind and everything like that so I'll, I'll show you that and hopefully there'll be some tips in there if you ever do decide to tackle a very large project in a very quick space of time some of the things you might want to look out for for that but for uh, june next month i'm going to put it over to you guys again so krieg was voted by the community and i shall let you guys vote again now currently on the voting it's a bit neck and neck gloom spike gets from aos versus the Forces of Evil from Lord of the Rings. It'll be interesting. But there's some others on there as well. So if you would like to see the army, go vote. I would say a bit of link, but have a look at the community thing. There'll be a vote on there. You can see what to choose. Just hit vote. Choose whatever you want. In June, the winner, I will paint that army. So, until then, everyone, my name has been Alston. This has been a very, very long month. And I'm going to go... Drink some beer. I'm going to go chill out for a bit. Until next time, everyone, be good. Be good to each other. And I shall see you whenever next we meet. Till then, bye-bye. I am so late on recording this. Hi, Loki. I know. I, oh, oh, you just see the oh, meaty breath. No, 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 no. <laughs> Siege tank of Hades breaching gel. Oh, I'm gonna need a bit to go through this. Three heavy mortar teams, uh, three auto cannon teams, two mortar teams. Oh. Heavy stubber and melter set of Krieger. <coughs> More boot. Three tank marders to set. Yeah, I'm gonna need all of this. Hades breaching drills. Cool. <coughs> hello, hello everyone. My name is Elston, and welcome to my channel, Elston Nation. I have a dog roaming.
underneath my legs.